Welcome to our Five on Five. Pleased to be joined by Senator Ron Wyden. Senator, thanks for being here. Thank you. So we're recording this late Sunday afternoon. Uh, what are you doing right now to prepare for the impeachment trial this week? What I've been doing, and it's just been a heck of a few days, a lot of late, uh, late nights, and including a, a flight com coming home, I was managing the big trade bill on the floor of the Senate, for example, late last uh, week. One out of four jobs in Oregon revolve around international trade. The trade jobs pay uh, a little better often than uh, the non-trade jobs. And then a few minutes later, I was in my seat on the floor of the Senate about to become a juror. And I tried to think about what the Founding Fathers would say. And I finally came to the conclusion they would want the United States Senate to work for a just outcome rather than a political outcome. Do you think the president is guilty of these charges? Certainly, you can't be an impartial juror if you make that kind of judgment. I think our challenge is to get all of the facts. I do favor witnesses. If you have witnesses, each side must get the same number of, uh, of witnesses. But I think given the way information just constantly keeps coming out, it's important for us to focus in the Senate on a fair trial, due process, and equal treatment for both sides. What do you have to say to people uh, on both sides of the political spectrum who, who may have made up their mind on this already? I have seen some remarks from, uh, from senators that uh, do con concern me. But I can also tell you, I know a number of senators who have not made up their mind. Doug Jones, uh, a Democrat from Alabama, w wrote a wonderful essay that raised issues that I'm very con concerned about. A number of other senators, I think, are agonizing, for example, over some of the rules, like uh, witnesses. So the Founding Fathers knew that there was some politics here. But they also knew that when you had something of this magnitude, it had to be country First, that's what I'll be focused on. A measure that would force President Trump to win congressional authorization before taking further military action against Iran reportedly has enough Republican support to pass the Senate. You're on the Senate Intelligence Committee. What can you tell us about the attack that killed General Soleimani? Well, first of all, I don't think the administration has made the case that the threat was imminent. And the fact is, presidents of both political parties have been walking all over Congress in the last few years with respect to Congress essentially giving up its authority with respect to uh, the ability to uh, decide whether or not to go to war. So I strongly favor this bill. I hold uh, Senator Wayne Morris's Senate seat. You better believe Wayne Morris would want this kind of accountability. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Much more in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with uh, Senator Ron Wyden. Big week on Capitol Hill. Uh, Senator, despite all the partisan rancor this week, certainly uh, work is getting done. Um, how does what you call the new NAFTA help Oregon? Oregon, uh, a number of industries are going to, uh, to benefit. Uh, we're a big ag state. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, dairy. We're going to have wheat. A number of our products, uh, uh, Canadians and Mexicans, really like uh, those kinds of products. It's going to help us there. It's going to help us with our technology because a lot of these countries are interested in our technology uh, as well. And what it'll do is it'll finally let us go after the trade cheats that have been ripping off Oregon uh, jobs. The original Trump bill didn't do enough in the area of trade enforcement. So I got together with my colleagues and I said to Bob Lighthizer, who's the president's top man in trade, you've got to work with us to have really strong enforcement. We can't just have a bunch of words on paper. We got it. Now we're going to be able to protect Oregon jobs from the trade cheats and the people who'd steal our technology. What are your 2020 priorities? My 2020 priorities at the top of the list, holding down health care costs. I mean, we see health care costs gobbling up everything in sight. That would be a top priority. Uh, election security. I can tell you from an intelligence standpoint, the threat uh, uh, right now, uh, today, is going to make what happened in 2016 look like small potatoes. And finally, a special Oregon issue, I want to make sure that the Saudis 
are not allowed to stay above the law. I got a memo uh, just in the last couple of days from the FBI. It was part of a declassification, and I got legislation passed to do. The Saudis have been lying to Oregon and to the American people. They said they weren't involved in all these instances where their fugitives got out of the country before prosecution. Now I have a declassified document from the FBI making it clear that the Saudis were lying about that, that the FBI found uh, that they had high confidence that Saudis were helping their nationals get out of the country. The Trump administration's got to step up, work with the Congress on a bipartisan basis, and make it clear to the Saudis they're going to be held accountable. They're considered allies. As far as I'm concerned, if these are our friends, we don't need any enemies. I was about to ask about that. So this is something you want both the legislative and executive branches to work together on. I, I, w I want to make sure that the Trump administration, which has to take the lead as the executive branch, finally makes it clear to the Saudis they are not above the law. The Saudis have lied to the people of Oregon. Their embassy put out a statement that we'll make available to your viewers saying that they had nothing to do with their nationals uh, who were escaping the country. Now the FBI has said, A, they believe they did, and B, if nothing is done, it's going to keep happening. And I will tell you, very close to uh, our home in southeast Portland, a young woman had her life snuffed out by a Saudi national who right before trial got out of the country. That's wrong, and it can't be allowed to continue. Senator, thanks for being here. Thanks Appreciate for it. having me. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back.